I play the tuba. I marched all the way through college, played in the basketball band at the uh, University of Kansas, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. So, you, <laughs> you got a you got a way back there. <laughs> Good deal. I figured there'd be one or two of us in the room. Okay. <clears throat> so, as we already said, my name is Justin Yurkovich. I work for Sprint, and if you haven't looked at my bio. Um, I actually work within our user experience and design group, so I'm not really a marketing person, and I'm not even really a usability person either, <clears throat> excuse me, because my training is primarily in industrial organizational psychology, so dealing with other kinds of issues within companies, mostly that are internal. So I kind of bring a, a different perspective and, and also different requirements to the, uh, to the space, and <clears throat> sorry. Um, okay, so as far as the study that we're doing and kind of the goals of what we're doing, maybe I should be over here. Yeah. Um, the goals of what we're doing is we are trying to figure out the best way to kind of to, to reach our customers. And our customers that we are surveying are not, anytime we invite somebody to a survey within my organization, it's unsolicited. They are already our customers. Um, primarily, we utilize postcards to reach those individuals, um, which in some ways is you know, maybe kind of archaic, but we actually get a fairly decent response rate, and we have a, a, a better ability of reaching our customers, largely because only about 30% of our customers have provided us with an email address that we can use to, co to contact them for surveys, or um, and an even smaller percentage has actually opted in for SMS contact. And so we're trying to, to sort out kind of the best, what the, the best return on investment is, and also whether or not we're kind of the demographics and the, the representation of, of our overall customer base. <clears throat> so the project that we worked on, or excuse me, that we're presenting here, we did a couple of different things. The first is that we, um, contacted customers in one of three ways, either using email, SMS, or using our traditional postcard methodology with a survey that we told them was uh, optimized for mobile devices. So we tried to encourage them to, to complete the survey using their mobile device, but they, it they were uh, welcome to do it in whatever way that they prefer preferred. And we also utilized three different uh, treatments in terms of the way that the survey was kind of structured and consequently what the invite for the, uh, the survey was as well. And Lori can talk about that. Yeah, so, so as Justin said, we, uh, we primarily were looking at uh, the length. This is the long and the short of surveys. And so everyone probably has the same hypothesis that I do. A mobile survey should be shorter. So we wanted to test that. Um, the, the, the folks at UXD have a very, um, have a very rigorous uh, survey system that we've put in place over years, and our surveys were traditionally about 15 minutes. We actually got them down from 20. We've been working hard. Um, but uh, traditionally 15 minutes in length. Um, and, and as Justin said, we, we recruit them through the mail because that's the most effective way of reaching them. Um, but we wanted to find out what would happen if we, if we shortened the length. What would that do, A, in terms of just generally, who, does that increase who responds to the survey? Does that change who responds to the survey? Do we get people who would look at a 15-minute survey and say, no way? Um, do they come to a 10-minute? Do they come to an 8-minute? We would have loved to have gotten the 8-minute a little shorter, but it proved challenging. Um, so we went, we, we did a bit of a controlled design. We, we did do our survey in the traditional way. The only thing we did untraditionally within the control group is we did recruit three ways. Normally we just recruit through postcard. We added a group of SMS respondents um, who had opted in to SMS and we sent them a text message said it was a free text because it was coming from Sprint. Um, and we, we also let them know, we gave them basically a short code HTML link that they could go to the, um, that they could go to either on their mobile phone, they could transfer it to a tablet, or they could type it into their computer, whatever was convenient for them. Um, and we offered them our typical $5 bill credit incentive. Um, the second group was a shorter survey. We told them it was a 10-minute survey. Everything else was identical. Please come and take our 10-minute survey. And again, we sent a group of postcards, SMS, and emails, and we controlled this. So we sent them a 10-minute survey, and we call this our foot-in-the-door method. Um, we sent them a 10-minute survey, and about three-quarters of the way through the survey, well, a little bit less than that, about 10 minutes into the survey, actually, so two-thirds of the way through, we gave them a choice. <clears throat> we gave them a choice of either ending the survey by just jumping ahead to the demographics, answering a couple of more questions, and then they were done, 
or we gave them a choice to stick in, finish the full 15 minutes, and they'd receive an extra $2 incentive. Now, we realize the incentive kind of tweaks the, uh, the proportions here, but that's what we, what we wanted to do. We wanted to see if we could get what we thought might happen is the 10-minute survey, the shorter length, would increase our starting response rate so that even if we had drop-off, and we have other research that we'd done, we thought we were going to get about a third drop-off. We thought about 60, maybe 70% of people would stick in and do 15 minutes, and we would work with the missing data. That would still be enough data for us to do good analysis on. Um, and we'll tell you in a little bit what happened there. And then our last treatment was we, we, split the sur we split the survey up into small chunks. We had a core section that was about five minutes long that we wanted to ask of everyone, and we needed that to kind of calibrate the results. And then what we did was we, we broke the rest of the survey into, th into four groups of about three minutes in length, so that got them a total survey length of about eight minutes. Um, we thought that this was short enough that we could go out without an incentive, and we were quickly proven wrong and had to recalibrate and give them $3. So, um, so that's what we did. So <laughs> that's... Um, and, and again, it was a traditional browser survey. We didn't use an app. We didn't want to make this difficult for people because it was unsolicited work. So it was done on a mobile browser. And at Advantis, what we do is we have, as I'm hoping a lot of you guys have, we've got mobile detect so we can tell what OS they're on and what, what device they're using. And so we, 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 mobile, we made, made sure the survey was as mobile friendly as possible from the design standpoint and also from the content standpoint. We really took a hard look at every question we were asking and said, what is this going to render like on a mobile device? and is this the right way to ask the question. So you guys agree with me that shorter surveys are going to give you a higher response rate? Which group do you think would have had the best response rate of the three? Group, group two? Dream group two? Well, we were wrong. Oops. What we actually found was that our control group had the highest response rate. 15 minutes with $5. Money talks. Um, <laughs> I, it, I was surprised that treatment group one wasn't higher. It was close and it was comparable, but I was surprised it wasn't a little bit higher, a little bit closer, because um, I was expecting to see that most people, uh, that 10 minutes was a more um, palatable length, especially on mobile, and what we found was, you know, money talks. And it, and it talked very strongly, because when we got to that inflection point in treatment group one, where we said, you can either finish the survey now and take your $3 and thank you very much, or you can stick in for five more minutes and we'll give you two extra dollars, 91% stuck in. Yeah, I know, I thought 60 maybe. Uh, and, they, and they stuck right through. And they stuck in, whether it, device irrespective, they stuck in on their phones, they stuck in on their tablets, and they stuck in on their computers. So what that taught us was that there maybe is another way to get our foot in the door um, in terms of, of completing survey work. And the, the, the short survey actually performed really poorly. Despite the fact that telling them it was short, despite offering them the same $3, it really didn't perform as well. It could have been a little bit anomalous, and it, you know, maybe if we were to do it again, it would come up to that 5%, but, um, but it really was, uh, it, it was a bit surprising. And what it tells us is that people will do surveys if you keep it interesting and if you, and if you do um, offer them a reasonable incentive. Um, but you do have to be very cautious, of course, in that the time on a survey is important. So when you're thinking survey design, I, for those who were in the workshop yesterday, I was really, really pushing this idea that survey, that... Um, uh, good mobile survey work is not just about having a good technological base, it's about designing a good survey. And so if you're designing a survey and it's a 15 minute survey or a 10 minute survey or a 6 minute survey, know you're going to add 20% of your time for people who are taking that survey on their phone. Respect that and design for it. Make that survey 12 minutes so that those people on the phone are 15. Or to even, you know, even go to the point of telling them, hey, if you take this on your phone, it's going to be 12, you know, it's 12 to 14 minutes. And maybe even say, hey, it's 14 minutes on the phone. And let them know. It was significant. The phone was four minutes longer. Um, <clears throat> one of the things uh, that, that I think is important to... Uh, uh, important to note on that is again it was it was device uh, that the, the the completion rate was quite good across all of the um, the methods and we're going to talk about that in a sec as well. So what device did they use depending on how they were recruited? So in our first column here, they were recruited by postcard, and 78% of people who were recruited by postcard went to a computer and took the survey. Thank you, we appreciate it. Um, <laughs> 
the, uh, with an additional 23% took that survey on one form of a mobile device or another, tablet or a phone. And the 23% was a really good number for us because this was, this postcard group, this represents the way we do research, you know, that w the way we've been doing research um, with the folks at USD, UXD um, all along. And typically we see 10 to 14% go on mobile. So simply by saying, this survey is mobile friendly and can be taken on any device as part of the recruitment, we doubled the amount of people who were taking it on mobile. Um, so that's a really, so, and, and this is important for us because people who, t we, we believe that people who take, it on, take a survey on a mobile device are different people. So we're reaching different people, maybe people who would normally ignore that postcard. Um, we did the same thing then for, uh, for people who received an email. Um, it went up to 50%, 49% of people who received the survey on email answered that phone on some form of mobile device, 38% on phone, another 11% on tablet. That's a big number, and again, e recruiting via email, recruiting via postcard, something maybe a little bit unique to us, recruiting via, via email to your own customer group, that is not unique. So if you guys are emailing your customers and you're not making sure your survey is mobile device friendly, you're annoying your customers <laughs> in some way, shape, or form, potentially. Um, and SMS, I mean, it, again, it's kind of a unique situation. Being the wireless carrier, we can send free texts, um, and we can, and we can uh, also offer free mobile data. Like, the time that they take to take the survey is not actually eating their data plan because we're the wireless carrier, so a little bit unique there. Um, but 94% attempted to take it on their phone. Um, so again, if you're, if, if you're in any way, because you can SMS to people. You can actually send an email to their SMS address and so you all you have to have is email technology and you can actually push to SMS to their phone but in, in most cases that's going to cost them you know the 10 cents on their text plan and it's going to cost them mobile data time so we talked about yesterday you need to think about that compensation but they will try to take it on their phone overwhelmingly I think this oops I went the backwards way sorry there go thank you okay now in terms of how <coughs> the kind of those that response rate breaks down looking across the different conditions um, and then as well as the different uh, device modalities or, or response modalities whether it was a computer a smartphone or a tablet um, we see sort of a similar pattern although the email group ended up uh, getting sp splitting more between um, tablet and smartphone than, than some of the others, as you can see here. So the percentages are the percent of the column, not the, uh, the road, if, if this uh, seems a little bit uh, confusing. But the, <clears throat> excuse me, but as you can see, we see a sim kind of a similar pattern of responses regardless of the condition. So regardless of the amount of time that we tell them that they're going to actually take the survey, they're gonna take it whichever way that they generally prefer. <clears throat> Okay, and so what this, uh, what this slide is showing you is that overall the, the kind of the breakdown of how individuals completed the survey or what, uh, what device they were using, that's what the column on the left is across all treatments, across all inv <laughs> invitation methods, um, et cetera. And so you see about 54% of those individuals <coughs> utilized a computer with about 8% on tablet and about 39% on smartphone. And then if we break that, and we also ask them what they would like to do for, or what they would prefer to do for surveys in the future, and if you break that out by category, you're looking at basically people using the device that they generally prefer. But the thing that you need to remember, and what's important here, is that within each of those groups, you have around maybe 15 to 30% of, of the respondents saying they would actually prefer to use something other than what they did use. So it's important to remember that if you are, in, when you are inviting individuals to be, to complete a survey, regardless of methodology, or excuse me, regardless of how you're uh, inviting them to take that survey, it's important to make that survey optimized and, and usable in these other contexts as well. What this, excuse me, what this slide is showing you is sort of the, the demographic breakdown that we saw uh, for customers based on how they completed the survey. So we've got, again, computer, smartphone, and tablet, tablet customers, and we see that in general, the, uh, smart, the, the customers that completed the survey using a smartphone tend to be younger, more diverse, um, less likely to work full time, less likely to have graduated college, uh, it's very possible it's because they are still in college. Um, 
and whereas we see the population that utilized a, a computer to complete the survey tends to be less diverse, whereas the TABL population is also less diverse, but more educated, more likely to work full time. And then in terms of kind of the user profile, because generally within my organization and what we're most interested in is how people are using their devices, <clears throat> is we, we see that basically those individuals that completed the survey using smartphones, that is how they're connected to the world. They uh, speak on their phone, they call on their phone far more than the other two groups, they text a lot more, they use the mobile internet a lot more. Um, there was a, a, a greater percentage did not have uh, internet access at home um, and also did not have internet access while they were at work. So we're also, so what we're seeing here is that we have sort of the older, less diverse uh, population you, represented by the sample that's taking the computers. We have the younger, maybe less educated, maybe lower income level, but more connected through their, their mobile device in the, uh, in the smartphone completion category. And then with the tablet group, we have individuals that are more educated, less diverse, maybe um, more likely to work full time. And then they also tend to receive a lot more emails. That was the other, the big difference there. So of course we, we looked at the data as well and, and just because of, again, the, the lovely legal departments, we can't really show you a lot about the data, but what I can tell you is, is looking specifically, going back to that treatment group two was what we really were interested in as kind of that second goal. Can we do really short surveys, not ask everyone every question on the survey and still be able to do good, good analysis? Um, and we actually found that we could. So we compared the control groups and specifically the control group, um, so they did the 15 minute survey, they answered all the questions, we compared that group to each of the groups that, conduct, that completed one of the shorter versions of the survey. Um, and we, we needed to look at the core metrics. The metrics that we measure in UXD, we measure long term over time where we, um, folks get comped on, on some of these metrics in some cases and they, um, and we're, we're, so we measured things like satisfaction with doing email on your phone, satisfaction with, with browsing the internet on your phone, satisfaction with your voice quality, because let's face it, it still is a phone. Um, as well as texting, and, and we have other metrics like that, satisfaction, how usable it is. We have various metrics throughout the survey. So we use those four. In this one, normally the survey might cover in depth one of those services. In this survey, we covered four, and that was kind of how we grouped um, the folks into four groups. And what we were able to find is that you can get comparable results. So the confidence interval for the MR folks in the room obviously goes up because we had fewer people in each cell. We had a lot of missing data. But what we found is a side-by-side -side comparison of the data, we actually saw no differences. We had 12 metrics between product satisfaction and product usability for the four products. Sorry, eight metrics, four products, two measures. And seven out of those eight were not statistically different between the control group and the, and the smaller sample size that answered it in, within treatment too. And the one that was different, I would argue, is not a business difference. It was statistically different, but it wouldn't make a difference in terms of the business decision they were making. Um, so what that said to us is that when we do hit those challenges of, oh, this survey's too long, I don't want to put that out there, and I definitely don't want to put that out there on mobile, that there are alternatives. You can think about ways to shorten the data, to ask, you know, maybe do a split half or do other, other ways of asking fewer questions. Not everyone has to answer every question as long as you think about how that data is going to correlate back and what information you need and you can still do a lot of the same analysis that you would regularly do. Um, our next steps are, are, are to um, to think about how we're going to recruit in the future because we think that by simply going postcard and not telling people they can take it online or on mobile online, we're missing out on a core group of people, that younger, diverse, more connected group of people. But conversely, if we were to go straight email, straight mobile, we would also be missing out on a very important group of Sprint customers that are a little more tech laggard, that are a little bit older, um, that connect in a different way. And remember, when we're talking about tech laggards, it's not like we gave them a pen and paper way to do this survey, they still, had, they still had to get onto a computer and conduct a survey, so they're not, you know, they're not my grandfather or anything like that. They're still reasonably tech comfortable, um, but even still, you see these huge differences. So it's just kind of a, a reminder for the folks out there. We can do lots of really cool and interesting things on mobile, and we absolutely all should be, but when you're looking at a, a, a product that is more general um, consumer base, you've got to make sure you're talking to everyone and not ignoring them because of methodological decisions that you've made. That's what we've got. 
if there's any questions. There is one here. Awesome. Oh, good. I'm getting into this. Um, did any of the surveys include mobile-friendly components like large grid questions that force zooming and scrolling to answer on small screens? If so, are there any differences in completion rates there? For sure. Um, we had very little drop-off. Uh, the only drop we did have among people who were SMS recruited, we had a higher drop-off rate. Um, but among, among the email and the postcard, we, we didn't have that drop-off rate. And what we did do is because we have mobile detect, grid questions don't look like grid questions on our, on our platform. So if you do have a question that's a table of scales or a table of responses, it actually breaks out the table and shows you one at a time. And unfortunately, despite all of our work, we have three grids that we can't get rid of. Um, there are 10, 10 items in each grid. One's 10, one's 13, one's 8, maybe 10. And we've so gotten rid of all the other grids, but we can't get rid of those because these are the metrics we've been tracking since for quite some time. Right. Um, but like I said, so we rendered them as best we can. Um, we, we don't show them in a shrink scroll situation. They're, they're actually rendered one item at a time. So it is yeah. a slight difference. Yeah. But again, we didn't see differences then in the answer choices we saw comparable. I think there's a question at the back. Well, that's, that's definitely, and that's something that I think has been done, but it, it's prohibitively expensive is, is what you're talking about. I mean, when we, like how many respondents did we have for this study? Over 3,000. Yeah. So, and, and because we are psychologists, at least on my team, and we, uh, we're real big on, we kind of bridge the gap between, it was kind of interesting, you know, hearing about, you know, the MR folks and the analyst folks well, everybody on my team f could be described in both ways. And so we're trying to kind of meet, meet some of the desires of, of both camps with any time that we're doing research like yeah. this. We have done caddy surveys for other divisions within Sprint yeah. and, and certainly um, uh, right to their mobile phones, um, whether that's a short CSAT, you know, transactional study too. We've done longer handset yeah. studies with them, but for other groups within Sprint. But yeah. we have different requirements here. Yeah. Okay. Just one more. No, what we did was we actually sent an equal amount to each. So when we recruited them via postcard, email, or SMS, uh, not only were they equal amounts of each, but we actually made sure that within that, uh, I can't remember how much sample it was, let's say, you know, within the 10 grand that were in that cell, um, we made sure that they were, they were demographically identical from the sample variables we had. So we had a little bit of demographic information about who they were as an account. Uh, we also had information about their usage of mobile data, texting, how much they pay per month, and right. we set all of that identical. And what I was asking is, so when you, when you texted people, did a third get the long No, we, we definitely saw SMS had the lowest response rate kind of across all three treatments. Um, postcard actually had the highest and email came second. Did it follow the same pattern of going from that you showed that the long survey had the highest response rate to now that it the same pattern? Yeah, very, very close. Um, the first two treatment groups were very close in some cases, but yeah, it did pretty much follow that pattern. One more question? Yeah, I just got one more at the back here. Um, well, it's actually two. Where are you? Just sitting, sitting okay. here. Um, when you looked at your response rate by incentives, did you notice there was a demographic profile in those that were the greedy buggers at one end and those that weren't? And also, when you looked at your incentives, did you alter your incentive model in terms of mobile credits, which uh, the kids love, Facebook credits the kids love, the dollar people like, and also doing stuff like you know, uh, vouchers or uh, PayPal schemes, etc.? Did you notice there was a different when you, difference when you looked at that as well? As far as the different incentives go, um, the reason why, because it was a $5 credit towards their bill, and that's kind of our, our general mode within our organization, and part of the reason that we only utilize that is because the internal cost isn't the same as, it, as the benefit that the person receives. So if we were giving them you know, Facebook credits, it, it would actually cost us more money, but they, wouldn't, they would be receiving the same value. So that wasn't something that we had considered. Um, and I'm not sure we've, uh, to be honest, I haven't looked at the uh, what incentive they received and, and like their income profile, which I think is a great, uh, we're going to go back yeah. and do even more on and this. And almost so. at the age profile as well of those that are willing to do the longer survey versus the shorter survey. 
just interesting to look at the demographics mm -hmm. between, because like you were saying, it, it, the one group, I think, with the 15 plus, because to your point, you were saying the higher incentive, the greater response rate, but it'd be interesting to see if there's a demographic skew on that as well. Yeah, for sure. Okay, um, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And now I'm going to turn over the mic.